Hello everyone. I'm doing this video to help some people still have questions about these collision problems. Over the last couple of class sessions, I have had people talking about when can I set up the kinetic energy conservation question. Or over the office hours, drop-in hours, I have had people, how do I start a problem? What formulas I can use? So this video will help you. Right here, whenever you are solving a collision problem, we have two tools to use, either momentum conservation formula or the kinetic energy conservation formula. But can I set up the momentum conservation for any type of collision? What type of collisions am I allowed to do the kinetic energy conservation? Momentum conservation, by that, what do we mean? Whenever we have a collision, total momentum, capital P, before the collision, can I set it up to equal total momentum of the collision after? Whatever it happens, they are sticking together, they are moving separately, bouncing back, no matter what type of collision, can I set it up? Can I say total kinetic energy of the system total kinetic energy, mass one, mass two involving before the collision, can I set up to equal total kinetic energy after the collision? Can I do that? What type of collisions they do it? So let's go ahead. Right here, we start talking about elastic or the perfectly elastic collisions. Elastic or perfectly elastic collision, right here, the wording tells you kinetic energy and the momentum, capital P, the total momentum of the system. Momentum is a vector, mass times velocity. Total momentum, add them up, sigma sign. That is constant. That's why you can set it up for a elastic collision. Kinetic energy is also conserved. The incoming mass before the collision, it has an initial velocity. It brings in that initial energy, kinetic version that is conserved. Nothing is losing, no heat generated, no sound generated. There's a collision, everything transferred into the after collision. Kinetic energy is conserved for the elastic collision. Whenever you are solving a problem, in the problem wording you are looking for, is the problem telling me it is a elastic collision? If that suggests elastic collision, perfectly elastic collision, or 100% of the kinetic energy is transferred. There we go. You have first tool is the momentum conservation, Second tool is the kinetic energy conservation to set up, find the unknowns. And later on, we have had two other type of collisions. In elastic, the other type, in elastic collisions, here we have before the collision, after the collision, two masses. They may be moving towards each other, whatever it is, the initial mass M1, M2, they deform during the collision, but they are moving separately after the collision, mass M1, M2. In elastic collision, this one could be was moving in this direction. Nothing is wrong. Still, they are moving after the collision separately. Also, perfectly inelastic collision. This is special. After the collision, they are moving together with a constant speed, constant velocity. In this situation, the deformation happens right here. Deformation happens here when they are sticking together. Some of the kinetic energy is lost. That incoming mass they had some kinetic energy, some portion of that is lost here. 
during the perfectly elastic collision, the maximum amount of kinetic energy is lost, dissipated. That's why you cannot do, can not do the kinetic energy conservation, only the momentum conservation for the elastic, the inelastic, sorry, inelastic collisions and perfectly inelastic collisions. Based on that, we all talked about this stuff. The table, this is your helpline. If the collision is elastic, momentum conservation, kinetic energy conservation, go for it. Elastic, perfectly inelastic, inelastic, my bad, inelastic, perfectly inelastic, explosions. The only tool you have momentum conservation. Sometimes for the inelastic collisions, perfectly inelastic collisions, they say, the problem will say 60% of the kinetic energy is lost. Only if the problem says this information, 60% loss means 40%, that is equal to 0.4 is remaining. What does that mean? Total kinetic energy after the collision that is equal to only 0 0.4, 0 0.4 of the kinetic energy total before the collision. That could be situations, the problem tells you this much lost, this much is remaining. This is for the inelastic or the perfectly inelastic collisions. But right here, for the elastic collisions, 100% is remaining, 100% is transferred. That's why you have a one right here, one times. Okay, so. Whenever you are solving problems, you are looking for the indications, specifications in the problem text to identify what type of a collision is that. Let's go practice it a little bit. Right here, two cars of equal or different mass collides and they move together after the collision. They move, they stick together. This is, they have a stick together version, perfectly inelastic, perfectly inelastic collision. Only the momentum is constant. There's no any information to say for 30%, 50% remaining. Only thing you can set for sure is the conservation of linear momentum to solve the problem, solve the unknown. Okay, similar to that. Any other examples? Two cards of equal or different masses collide and move separately after. They move separately after the collision. These type of questions are very tricky. Let's go back, check our table. They move separately after. They move separately after. This is true for both elastic and inelastic collisions, but in the problem text, we should specifically see elastic collision to set this kinetic energy conservation. But in this one, it is just a collision. They move separately after definitely this guy is an inelastic collision. So you can set only the momentum conservation for this question right here. Do not make assumptions. It does not say this is an elastic collision, okay? This one right here, it says two equal masses collide elastically. This is what we are looking for. Go ahead, you can set up both this guy and this guy. Conservation of momentum, conservation of kinetic energy, elastic collision, done. Whenever you have here two cards of different mass, okay? They collide elastically, done. Momentum conservation, kinetic energy conservation, you can set it up both two tools you have if the problem says the collisions are elastic. Momentum conservation, constant 
kinetic energy constant before and after they are the same you can set it up these two formulas here we go for the elastic collision that's how you read the information okay right here same as what you did for the lab it says Two cards are colliding. They are going to stick together after the collision. This is the indication of perfectly inelastic. All you can do, momentum total before the collision is equal to momentum total after the collision. There we go. This one right here, it shows. It shows total momentum constant, momentum before the collision, bad, momentum before the collision, momentum after the collision. You can set it up to find the unknown final velocity, the common velocity of the two cards moving together. Look for the indications. They stick together. And again, specifically, I am telling this one to you guys, do not let negligible friction make you assume this is an elastic collision. No, no, no. Friction is not there. Impulse approximation is neglecting any friction involved in this type of collision. We are all worried about what happens to the kinetic energy, what happens to the momentum whenever we have collisions asking velocity before and after. Okay, so moving forward, this guy, two ice hockey pucks, they are colliding. There's no any indication to tell you it is an elastic collision, no and no. They are moving separately after. It says they are just colliding. This is in elastic only the momentum equation before and total momentum after these ones they are sticking together this guy right here the other one similar to the example we did in class those two cards are locked together sticking together this is these two are perfectly in elastic only the momentum before momentum after these are easy everyone unless you practice looks harder but please keep practicing do these numbers these examples are from your textbook right here explosion for the explosion if i take you back right here explosions only the momentum conservation there we go we will do one example in monday's class you can set it up total momentum before the explosion total momentum after the explosion momentum is for one single object mass times the velocity please keep practicing i hope this video will help and i will see you in class